Welcome today's Black history maker, Charles Vest, incredible entrepreneur. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this edition of today's Black History Makers. I am your host, Sherry Leopold, and host of Outside the Box with Sherry Leopold on TV. So excited to be here with another trailblazer. Uh, welcome to the show, Charles Vest, who is an author, speaker, and incredible motivator. And I know you're going to agree. Thanks for being here, Charles. Well, thank you very much for having me. And when I heard that I actually get to be, I get to be one of the guests on Sherry's show. And I thought you only did stuff for women. You know, it's like, you know, I think it's iShe TV or something like that. So I get to be an iShe TV. Can't ask for much more than that. That's right. Well, you know what? And here's the thing. The reason you're here today is because you are a today's black history maker and you're making mm -hmm. history with men and women. So anyway, as the CEO of Dream Big with Sherry, I'm always interested in learning how big other people think. Uh, and as a fellow dreamer, I would love to ask you, Charles, what's your big beyond imagination, you know, big audacious goal, hairy dream, like to impact the world? Hmm, that's a great question. And, you know, my big dream has actually materialized very recently. And it, I've been reminded about the wisdom of my elders, the wisdom of my grandparents, the wisdom of other people's elders. And I really think that it's time for, for us to move towards that elder intuition. You know, instead of listening to the internet and going off of this newfound information that you just researched, which is called Google. The why not Google. ask? Yeah, exactly. Why not? Why not ask people that have actually been there, done that, seen that, wrote the T-shirt, you know, wrote the T-shirt, bought the T-shirt, and <laughs> wrote the stories about it. So I, that's my big, my big goal, my big audacity goal, my audacity goal, if you will, if you will, is to really help people remember that there's plenty of wisdom right in your family tree, and go ask them. And you'll find out that this isn't the first time we've gone through stuff like this. I love that. You know what? We can never discount uh, where we come from and who we came from, you know, as, as being those mentors. I love that, Charles. So as you are making history today, as we speak, what historic black trailblazers do you feel have inspired your journey and really paved your road to success? Hmm. I'm lucky. You may not know this about me, but I happen to be a descendant of the whole Martin Luther King Jr. movement in that my great-grandmother was Rosa Parks' mom's best friend. Yeah, connect the dots there, right? And so yeah. she lived in Montgomery, Alabama, and that whole Rosa Parks experience, uh, you know, when she came home to her mom, my great-grandmother was there for that whole time. She was there at the church when Rosa Parks went to the church after being released from the police department. And and so my great grandmother, Hattie Mae Smith, they actually named a named a day here in San Diego, the Hattie Mae Smith Day, when she turned a hundred, and she still lived seven more years and really just died of just being tired. She didn't have any challenges. She was perfectly coherent all the way through. And she was a slave. Uh, which is hard to believe, but when they released the slaves, they paid they paid my great grandmother at the time in in eight nineteen hundred and two. Uh, she was born no, she was born in nineteen hundred. So nineteen hundred and and thirteen, they even though slavery was abolished, they gave the colored folks a nickel a week and a bag of rice. So they weren't slaves, but they really were slaves, and uh, and so she. She lived to be 107, like I said, and, and had had me at her house by her side for about nine of those last years telling me these stories over and over again. So um, she is a trailblazer that I look up to. And uh, and she really shared with me that the history books did not get it correctly right. And uh, there was a lot of things. And the one fact I'll share with you for just the interest of time is that uh, I ask this question often. Do you know or do you have any idea how long they shut the buses down and boycotted the buses uh, when when they actually started that movement? No. 380 days over wow. a year. And most people think it was like a week or maybe or a couple of days. 
And what happened was they, when they decided to boycott the buses, they, they got together at the First Hope Baptist Church, same church that uh, Rosa went to, and they decided that the colored folks would drive everyone around to work while they boycotted the gas stations. And then, uh, and then the gas station attendants stopped selling them gas after one day. So they they started to walk and ride the buses, and uh, then they had boycott of the buses because the, they still didn't make any changes. So they literally walked to work for over a year, in most cases, with uh, with the white folks throwing coke bottles and apples and oranges and whatever they could find at them as they were walking. It was a tough, tough time. But if you were to meet my great grandmother Hattie Mae Smith, and you know when she was hanging out in her apartment complex, taking care of everybody at a hundred years old. Right. Uh, you would never, you would never think you, that she had lived a, a, a tough life. She was just loving and caring and accepting and strong and, you know, Christian thanking God for every step she took. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you wouldn't know that she had, she had gone through so much. So that's, that's a lesson for me. It's like, you're not, you're not defined by the tragedies that you've had to go through also. Absolutely. I always say you're, you're, you are not your experiences. They are experiences you've had Um, and they can make you stronger or you can allow them to just break you down. So I love that story. Oh my gosh. Sitting here with goosebumps. That's amazing. Um, And what phenomenal history, right? That's, and, and goes to your first point. So as you are making history today, Charles, if we fast forwarded 50 to 75 years, what is somebody going to be saying about Charles Vest and the impact that you've made on them in, in the way that you want to be remembered? What's going to be your legacy? Well, first off, uh, since I'm 60 years old now, I will I might still be around 50 <laughs> years from now. <laughs> since Patty right. Smith died at 107 and I'm 60 and I look like I'm 30, so... There's yeah. a possibility if I don't get hit by a truck, I could be here then. But uh, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> anyway, I don't know if I want to after that long. But you know, what 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 will the what will fifty years from now? What will they say about me? They will they will most likely think about the impact that I made on my children. I have four children, and they're mm-hmm. amazing, every one of them. And I believe that because of the eclectic life that I've had, I've actually had an opportunity to really make an impact on thousands of people. I, I, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. So there's 32 years that I've had an opportunity to help people, you know, one day at a time kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. a lot of impact. Uh, I, I actually started the CBD movement, which you might know about and yeah. in regards to, you know, the cannabis CBD movement. And I know those two don't seem like they go together, <laughs> but they do because one, yeah. uh, CBD is non-psychoactive. So there's a way you can get all the healthy aspect without the high. And so I've been able to really travel around the country helping people with that. And so I don't know exactly how you know my speaking or my motivating or the books that I've written. I don't know which one people will remember, but I think there'll be something. <laughs> out of all that yeah. I've been able to do. And that is that is me in a nutshell, really. Uh, Sherry, I am the guy that, you know, they say, why do you do all these things, Charles? What drives you? And it's I just want to fill that dash in between born here, died here, and what did you do with that dash? And I've just been every day working on who can I impact next. And I was just going to say, that's the whole you know, mad thing that's make a difference. That's what I'm hearing you say is they're going to say he made a difference. Sure. That's the short version. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So how can I, obviously you're such an inspiring person, Charles, how can somebody get in contact with you if they want to book you to speak or if they just want to connect with you in some way, how would they do that? Well, it's pretty easy to just find me on social media. You know, my name, Charles Vest is, kind of an uncommon name, so it's easy to find me. I look different than the other two Charles Vest there are out there, and uh, except for my father, I look a lot like him, but he's not on social media. But uh, just go, just find me on social media, or you can simply go to charlesvest.com, and you'll see that I do a lot of masterminds, and you can sign up for any of the masterminds. I give 
any people that come in from you know an interview or or a show, I give them a major discount. So just sign up to get information, and you'll find that whatever the price is, I usually knock off a pretty good portion because I love being supported by folks like you. So it's pretty easy to find me. Oh, thank you so much, Charles. And I really appreciated getting a chance to talk to you today. And I thank you and I salute you for being one of today's black history makers. Thank you very much. And like I said, I really appreciate being on your show and you are making a difference too. So I guess we're both mad. That's right. We're both mad, <laughs> mad and so happy. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. You're welcome.